So a little while ago, I took a look at the terminal version of Joplin, which is a note-taking app. And today I'm gonna to take a look at the GUI version. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell come down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this is the GitHub page for Joplin. I'm not going to go through all of it because I think I went through it in the terminal video. I don't remember. Anyway, so the main things we're going to go over in here is the installation process. So on Windows, there's this installer here, Mac OS, but the one you're probably interested in is the Linux version. So you have the option of using the app image that's available here, or you can run this command. If you're on Arch, the AUR version actually comes with the terminal and the GUI version. So if you've installed it like that, then you've already got it installed. So I don't know what it's called on other distros. It's probably called Just Joplin or something. I don't know. But on Arch, at least with the AUR package, it is called Joplin Desktop. So we'll run that and bring that open. Okay, so you'll notice it's very, very similar to the terminal version, but just obviously laid out very much like a GUI program. So that made no sense as a statement. You know what I mean. Anyway, <laughs> so one thing I didn't mention when I did the terminal version is you can actually synchronize it with like Dropbox and Nextcloud and a couple of other things, OneDrive, WebDAV. And the reason that there's all of these different solutions for synchronization is because they don't want you to be tied to a single cloud provider. If you want to use Dropbox, you're free to use Dropbox. If you want to use Nextcloud, you're free to use that. You could even host it on GitHub if you wanted to, or GitLab if you want to set that up by yourself, but you're gonna to have to do a bit of different work to get that set up. You could probably just put the database in a Git repo. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but it's available there as an option. So there's all of these notes that come with it when you first open up. So I'm not gonna go through all of them, but there is some nice stuff in here that I might briefly mention. So there's this web clipper thing. So if you pass in a link of some description, I'm not sure how you get this link. So the web clipper is a browser extension that allows you to save web pages and screenshots from your browser. Okay, you have to install this extension and then you can chuck this link basically into a document and have an easy image in there or obviously you could just link an image in like you normally would so it supports the github version of markdown so you can do things like tables as well which are really neat so you also have the option of doing these checkboxes so if you look over in the rich text version over here we've got this table in here which is nice and fancy just like you'd expect the table to be and you've got these checkboxes which you can check off like that and they work like checkboxes and nothing's too special there. Now, you also have the option of using uh, KTEX notation to do uh, mathematics, I guess, which is really cool. And I don't understand at all what this syntax is, so don't expect me to explain it to you. And yeah, that's pretty much everything for the tips document. There's this notes in here about importing and exporting notes from Evernote as well as other note apps. I don't have any of those installed, like I don't have a setup for the synchronization. So I can't show you that, but when you first open up Joplin, it will show you this. And I'm sure there are other videos that can actually show you how to do those things. So what we're gonna be going over is basically the basic usage of this application and just some of the cool stuff you can do that you can't do in the terminal version. So one of those things that I mentioned in the terminal video is you can actually have sub notebooks. So if we just create a notebook now, hopefully the text is big enough. I've increased it compared to how I normally use it, but I'm not exactly sure how well it's gonna be on a mobile device, for example. So if we wanna call this something like, let's say YouTube. Yeah, that'll work. And there's our new notebook. So if you want to add a note to this, we can do that with this button up here. And that will just add a note. If you don't give it a name, I don't believe it'll actually add it to the notes section. So let's just call it new note. And yep, that now adds that into the section. If it was there already and I'm just blind, let me know, but <laughs> yeah. So you can, I believe you can swap this over to a to-do. Yes, you can. So if we, if we press this button here, that'll swap it over to a to-do like you can do with the terminal version. And now that it's a to-do, you can just click this and you can cross it off. 
and you can actually tag stuff. So if we add a tag to this, let's say a tag, and that should, yes. Okay, so the thing with tags is that when you put a tag on it, basically it'll let you group a bunch of notes together that are in separate notebooks. So let's say you have, I don't know, let's say you have a YouTube notebook, a programming notebook, and maybe an exercise notebook. And in each of those notebooks, you've got things that you want to do today, for example. So you could then tag all of the things you want to do today. And if you look in the tag section, then it'll have a list of all of those things that you've got tagged as to do today, even though they are in like different notebooks. So that's a cool little feature that you can do. I don't remember if you can do that in the terminal version. I don't know. Anyway, because I basically just use it as pretty much a glorified file manager. One of the other things I noticed in the terminal version that isn't available, but it might be, and I just can't work out how to access it, is you can have notebooks within notebooks. So if we add a notebook in here, let's say new notebook, for example, and that'll add it just to the notebook section, but we can actually drag this into one of the other notebooks. So let's say we drag it to the YouTube notebook. And I don't think that there's actually a hard limit to how deep you can have your notebook tree going. Let's just add a few and see what happens. Cause I, I haven't tried this out. Okay, so yeah, it looks like you can just add notebooks as much as you want. So if you wanna just have this massive tree of notebooks that's impossible to navigate, then you can do that. I don't know what the productive use of doing that is, but the point of having a notebook is it's effectively a folder. So let's say you have a YouTube notebook, for example, and you have, let's say, marketing, and you have videos, and you have, I don't know, some other stuff. So if you don't want to have a long list of notes within the YouTube notebook, you could make a bunch of different notebooks within the YouTube notebook. And then those notes can then be grouped together in each of those sections. So it makes it a lot easier to actually understand what each of the notes are for. So one thing I haven't shown you yet is that you can actually I'll remove these ridiculous notebooks. So we'll remove those, jump back into the note that we have. One thing I didn't show you before is that you can switch the layout of this. So right now we've got the plain text editor or the kind of a rich text editor with this. Not sure how you would describe it. This is the rich text section. This is the plain text section. I guess it's kind of a plain text with prompts to add stuff into it. I guess that's the best way to describe it. I don't know. Anyway, so right now we've got all of this stuff here. So if we press the layout button, this will switch the rich text section off and you'll just have the editor and this stuff over here. We press it again. That will then just bring you into the rich text viewer mode. You can't actually edit in this mode, which I, I kind of would like to see you be able to, but I guess it'd be a bit difficult to do. Oh, you can bring in an external editor like this. So, uh, I, okay, maybe that's not gonna work properly. I don't think I've set up an editor for it to work properly with this. Oh God, what is it doing? Now it's trying to download something. <laughs> Okay, so maybe that not, might not be working properly. And we press that again and it jumps back to this mode. So that's all the different layouts you can do. So the only reason I'm even bothering to cover this is because of one feature that's available in the settings. So if we go into options and there's actually different editing modes. So I've got it set to Vim mode, but there's also an Emacs mode and a default mode available. So default is just your general sort of notepad sort of text editor where you can just write stuff and you don't really have any extra bonus features. And obviously Emacs is gonna act like Emacs and Vim is gonna act like Vim. So yeah, I don't actually have a program set up for my editor, but it should be trying to use my default editor, but it's not for some reason. So odd, maybe if we, try that with NVim in here, it'll actually work properly. I'm not sure. Okay, jump out of that. And now if we press the edit and external editor, oh, uh, I guess cause I need to then pass it into a terminal. Let's see if we can get this to work. I haven't actually tried this. So if we go ST then dash E and NVim. So that should try to open up NVim within ST. I don't know if that's gonna work. Anyway, let's try it. Run that and we go edit anyway. Oh, okay, now that will work. So you've got to actually set it up within the editor. I guess it's not gonna detect my default editor unless the reason it's not doing it is because my default editor is NVim and then it's not trying to open up a terminal to put it into and it's just not 
working properly. I don't exactly know what the problem was that actually was. But now I guess if we edit this, we should be able to change the name up here. So we change that. And let's just add some other text in here. It doesn't really matter what it is. We save and quit that. And there we go. Now what do I actually change it over here? So it changed the title of it and it also changed the contents of the actual note that we have. So that's actually kind of cool. So if you want to use the GUI version and also want to use your terminal editor, or maybe you, you like using a GUI editor, maybe you use, uh, what's it called? GVIM? Yeah, maybe you use GVIM, or maybe you, you want to use, I don't know, VS Code, or whatever editor that you use on a daily basis. You can actually integrate it with the GUI version if you want to. And I guess if you close it, it's not going to disable this, so it's going to keep it on the watching mode. So I guess if we had just saved it and not saved and quit, it would have kept it open. Not sure, haven't really tried it much before. So if you wanna hide this sidebar in here, then you can just toggle that on and off. You can toggle the note list on and off as well. And yeah, that's pretty much that for the just general stuff. So I obviously don't have something set up to sync right now, but you can check your synchronization status and you can synchronize up here. And there's also a binding for it. So that's just bound to control S. So your normal save binding will be your synchronization. There are these options in here to import stuff and also to export stuff. So if you wanna export your notes as Joplin export file, that's probably not the best to go with, but you could do something like just general markdown or you could use JSON or you could also export as a PDF. Let's try that. Let's see what it's gonna do. Let's drop it into my just general downloads folder. And what just happened? <laughs> I hope that was recorded on camera. For some reason, the light theme came back on for a second. Don't know why. Anyway, so if we go into my downloads, that's the wrong folder. I should probably fix that. And what do we call it? New no.pdf. So that'll just do some basic formatting on it and you can see it as a PDF, I guess. Don't really know what the benefit of having that is, but if you want it, then it is available. So I think that's pretty much everything for this there's obviously some different stuff in here, like you can toggle stuff on and off if you want to. You can change the layout. There's your basic editor stuff. There's nothing too special in here that I haven't really gone over. It's kind of just pretty much the same as the terminal version, but you have this GUI that you can access everything from. And if that's what you prefer, then you can feel free to use that. But for me, I'm probably gonna keep using the terminal version because I don't really see any extra benefit I get from using the GUI. If I can use the terminal and get the exact same or roughly the same features with it, then I'm just gonna use that and that's what I'm gonna do. But as I said, feel free to use the GUI version or the terminal version, whatever you wanna use. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. If you've got any other programs you want me to check out, let me know down below. I've actually got a list of note apps that I want to take a look at on this channel because in like early January or so, I want to do a video on a Linux workflow for a student. So I want to be able to actually direct people to these videos so that once I make that, they can actually go see what those programs are in more detail. So if you want to see those videos when they come out, remember to subscribe and ding a little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I think I might be able to hit 250 subs before the end of the year, so any help would be really appreciated. So down below, I've got my Discord where you can go and chat with me, or my library if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist of this video. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. And also, if you want to support the channel, I've got my support links down below. So if you want to give me even a couple of cents, go there, check that out. But my content will always be available for free, so don't feel pressured to actually go do that. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, so I'm out.